Hello and welcome to the second Adventure Creator tutorial. This time we are going to make our player character and make it so it can move in our scene. So first things first, I've added uh, this simple sprite here. This is very basic sprite setup for 2D games or like pixel art games. Sprite mode for this has to be multiple because we have multiple sprites in the same sheet and I think the pixels per unit size 32 is fine for this one. We want to have read slash sprite enabled. This was something about raw pixel data. Yeah, I think something had wanted to have this enabled. I don't remember what it was, but let's just have it. No compression and filter mode to point, no filter. And apply. Then we go to the sprite editor. This character is 54 by 6, 96. So yeah, it's perfect right like this. But we're not finished yet because I, what I want to do is have our pivot point in the legs. So like this, choose one of the cells, move the blue ball here, the pivot point around. It's not that uh, important if it's perfectly in the middle, just have it in the legs. Choose pixels. Make sure it's uh, like pixels like ticks and not like, don't choose it like this in normalized mode. You can choose it here, but then make sure it's whole pixels. Then you switch to normalized. Copy this value, put it into your slice pivot settings custom, paste into there and take the Y and put it there. Now when you slice again and apply every single pivot point in this sprite sheet is in the same spot. Now we have all of these like we want them and the pivot point is in the bottom. It is important to have it on in the bottom because of how we are going to manage our movement and uh, order in layer settings. Next we are just going to drag one of the sprites into the game world. Here we are. Turn off gizmos for now. There is our hero character for now. Her name is Morgan. Okay, and now Adventure Creator has this tool, Character Wizard, that will make life a lot easier for us. Here we choose the base graphic if this is a player or an NPC. We choose this to be our player and choose the Morgan sprite that we added to our scene. Make sure that it's in the zero positions. I think it sets it into zero positions when you make this, but just to be sure. I want to use the sprites unity to animate this. Mechanism is more for 3D things. And this is fine for us. Okay, next and then just finish. And there we have our new player. Yay! <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So let's name it. Her name is now Morgan. Yes. And let's go through the settings. Here in the player script, that uh, it's, it's from the adventure creator of scripts, we have paths, we have player, and we have some colliders and a rigid body. Okay, and an audio source. We can close that, we're not gonna need it. The paths don't even have anything. The player, okay. Let's just remove the talk name because this handles the animations. We're not going to have a different uh, talking animation for our character when they talk. Um, then we were going to write Morgan, if I knew how to write Morgan underscore idle. And then we add Morgan underscore walk. And we will use the same animation for the room. That's fine. You can do that. We have four facing directions as per for the sprite. It's in that style. If you have more, you can have eight or custom or none, if that's what you prefer. Frame fl flipping, we won't need that because we have for both right and left directions. The speed, I think it could be a little bit faster here. It uh, The st speed always depends on your character size. So you may need to fiddle around with these values. We will not turn our root object in 3D because this is a 2D game and we really don't want this. Um, I guess this is like something in a different type of 2D game you can use this, but not 
here. We will have retro style movement so the character ignores acceleration and acceleration values. And we will have, want to have the minimum run distance to be zero, so they run instantly. It looks more like smooth and better when you are making custom like movement patterns. We will ignore gravity, of course. We want to freeze the rig rigid body when idle. That's what it says. Let's size it up a bit. Move it rigid body 2D, yes. And it says to us for smooth Smooth movement, rigid bodies, interpolation should be set to either interpolate or expo extrapolate. And we won't need the ground check layers. Okay, let's just add at this point. This is the speaker level. Every time our player speaks, this is her name that's shown. Um, rigid body 2D, we want it to have. I'm not entirely sure the, about the difference with these two, but I usually just put interpolate. That's fine. And in the constraints, you want to freeze the Z rotation. So our character won't be going like this. <laughs> that's that's not good. I choose the sprite sort point to be pivot. I don't quite remember if this is important because Adventure Creator handles a lot of things for us, but it's not there. And we want to go actually back to the uh, root object here. Let's see uh, these settings first through. Okay, uh, the default settings are like okay, but I'm gonna size down this circle a bit. Okay, yes, sprite, edit mode preview. This sh always shows the correct order in layer when in edit mode. And then, let's see, did the sound have anything important? This is something we have to modify at some point, but we are not going to be playing with audio scope just yet, so that's not important right now. I think what we want to do is just put the relative volume to half. This is going to be for our walking sounds. I think that's the only thing we are going to be doing with this player character. Okay, so while we have our Morgan sprites um, selected, Choose the animation and to begin animating Morgan underscore sprites, create an animation clip. So create and give it the name Morgan underscore idle, like we wrote into the main game object before. But now we need to add underscore D. This we have four of the directions down, right, left, and up. And all of these need to be separate. And then for each of the directions underscore and the letter that determines the direction. And we have to do this for all of the idle and walk animations. But that's quite easy. For the idles, it's just the one sprite. Create a new one, select this, change the letter right, and choose the correct sprite here. Make another, choose the other letter, pick the correct sprite. There we go. We can see the difference here. And then, lastly, up. And there we go. That's perfect. Then we create the walk animations. Walk. And now, this time, we are going to choose the three of the walk down animations. But this is not quite enough. What I do. When we have this, if it's just this, it looks a bit odd. Uh, I'm sure this can be done in different ways. But I usually just choose the center one and add it to the last two of these. Like this time is fine and it looks like this. Our character now has a walk animation. This is how I've done it for Forever and Dark and Break. And sure the you could fiddle around with the FPS, like the values, how fast these animations are running. But this is the default value, and I just find it easier to just do it straight from these, from the default values like this. Okay, now we have a walk down. Then we choose walk left. And it's the next three ones. There we go. That's about right. Do the same thing, and there we go. We're walking left. Now, create clip. Then we add right. Choose these sprites. 
there we go at the center piece to the last two places and that's fine and lastly we are going to be walking up and then choose you 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 there we go and go there then we do this and that looks fine okay now we have all the basic idle and walk animations for this character and that's all we need for now so we are going to be adding here on the Morgan sprite. I don't quite remember if that actually matters too much. But we are going to have some walking sounds. And we want to have, hold on, play sounds automatically, walk separation. I think these values might be okay. We don't want to have pitch and volume variants. Okay, now we want to add, hold on, let's just make a sprites folder for our character and animations folder for the animations. There we go. So our asset folder is nice and clean. Now I'm going to find some audios for us to use with the footsteps. Okay, I just added and renamed some uh, audio files, these are the same ones that I use in For Evelyn and Dark and Break, so yeah, these are fine audios for our walking. Let's add these to the footsteps sound script. I think the first seven or eight go here. They sound fine with the walking sound, so we have some variants. Yes, the first seven and the last three are going to be our running sounds. This work fine. And now just remember to have the character to actually be your player character and the sound child to play from this sound child of this character. Yes. Okay, I think that's fine. I actually wanted to remind you that if you have multiple different audios for your walk sounds, they have to be in a folder called resources. And there has to be a folder called saveable data and then audio. And there are all the sounds that will be saved. So if you change your character's footsteps, this will remember them. So basically if you save your game and load them in some different place, it will ha still have the correct uh, audio for the footsteps. It, if it changes during the game. Let's make a um, prefabs folder. I think we have everything we want to do for this character. We have the audios for the footsteps. The animations are set up. Sound child, we will modify this at some point, but it's fine. And here we go. Let's make a prefab out of this. Just drag it into the assets folder. Yes. And now we can delete this. So we won't have duplicate player character. Now we just go into the settings and find our player prefab. So here, drag it there. Now this will spawn player start 2D will be the default player start and the or player will spawn here. Now before we want to the scene, let's just add some of Morgan's clones here so we can actually see the movement. Okay, let's play. Let's see if our character moves. Yeah, and we don't have any animations. Let's see what's the problem here. Cannot play animation Morgar. <laughs> yes, I know there was a typo in our in my idol and walk names. Don't worry about it. I fixed it. Everything will be fine. Let's just play this scene. There we go. The character is quite slow because it's pretty big actually, and the camera isn't quite as like high, I want it to be higher, like the head should be around in on the center of the camera. So let's fix that quickly. So we want to offset the vertical, like maybe, is this the correct like direction? Let's see. So one point, two, five, maybe is fine. To five. Follow speed, let's crank that up to 10. 
change our speed to like five and I don't know seven for the run. We don't actually have the run yet. We can't run because we haven't. Yes, this looks fine. The camera follows us. There's a slight like delay when it stops. It's fine, but we can see that our character is actually moving. These sprites don't have any colliders or uh, orders in layer yet. I will show you how to do that next. But this seems fine. We can move our character around and the animations work correctly, whichever direction we are moving towards. So that's great. And the audio for the footsteps is also there. Okay, next things I think I'm gonna add the... So basically, just add a run button into your button manager. I mean input manager. And I think left shifts and right shift is fine. I think that's the correct name for the what it has to have. Let's see, AC game editor settings. This shows the available inputs. This just needs to be a input named run and choose a button for it. Now we can run. It's a little bit faster. I could crank it up a bit more. So basically just add Okay, like like eight. Let's see now. That's a bit better. We can actually run a bit faster if we want to. That's fine. Okay. Next thing. Choose all of the sprites that you want to have the order layer. And then we add follow sorting map. Click on live preview. And then if you are sure that the, all of the, your sprites are in the correct places, then remove component. Now they will be great. Let's just add a um, quick physics 2D circle collider for you. And it's around near the bottom. There we go. And now just copy this component and add it to everyone else. And paste. Now they all have circle colliders at their feet. Let's see. I think the mm, sprite sort point is still on, sen on the center, but I think, yeah, this looks fine. So now we can go on like f on the front of the character of the different sprites and behind them. This is how the ordering layer thing works. This looks great. And basically, do this for everything that you want your character to be able to walk behind and front of. Okay, that's it for this part of the tutorial. Next time we will get to working on some sort of map for our character to move in. Thank you for watching.